If you've been following along on my video series, you've seen that we have already talked about proper grip on the pistol in one video. Then we talked about proper draw of your pistol. Now we're gonna go into magazine change on the pistol. First thing that we wanna talk about is our equipment. Now, what I'm gonna go over are basic fundamentals. And these fundamentals apply for whether it's your range gear, like I'm wearing here, whether it's a tactical vest and your tactical gear, whether you're law enforcement and you have your, uh, you know, your patrolman and you have your street belt on, or your everyday carry for your concealed and maybe a spare magazine. All these fundamentals are gonna apply to each. It just depends on where you have your spare magazines and how you have things set up. So as you can see here, I'm just running my range gear. This is my uh, CNG holster tactical belt. So on it, I've got my, uh, my drop holster on this side for my Glock 34. This is my uh, my new Z 34 and then I've got the competition holders for the Glock magazines and I've got three of them on here and if you know the way that they're set up you may be able to see but all of my magazines are in here and they're all in in the same exact direction so the bullets are pointing all towards my center line okay each one of them magazines are in here they all point to center line and there's a reason for that now, when we talk about the magazine change, if you haven't seen my other videos that we just talked about, go back and look at them because this, the fundamentals for the magazine change are gonna build on the other things that we've already done. So the first part of it would be, I'm shooting and I need to change my magazine. So in this, we're just gonna talk about basically a speed reload or I'm in the middle of a firefight type reload. So all I wanna do is drop that magazine and put a fresh one in. So in this situation, as I'm shooting, okay, the first thing that I need to do is I've got to break my grip because I need to do a magazine change. So when I break my grip, two things are going to happen. My support hand is going to come off and it's going to come back here to center. All right. And this is building on our draw. When we came up in the other video, we come up to the draw, we meet the pistol in the center, we push out, right? So now we're going to build off of that and just continue that muscle memory and good fundamentals. So we come back here, this hand comes back. For me, I have a smaller hand, so I need to flip the pistol a little bit, but I'm gonna keep the pistol vertical. This is key, all right? Keeping the pistol vertical is gonna allow gravity to take over and gravity to help us to extract that magazine. If we turn the pistol to the side, then when we go to release the magazine, we're gonna end up with friction, and that's when you start to see guys do this fancy Hollywood magazine flip stuff, which is totally useless, all right? All you're doing is creating more friction on the pistol or on the magazine, don't need to do that. Keep the pistol vertical, Okay, we're gonna press the magazine. If you have smaller handles, you may need to, you know, do some practicing where you're flipping the pistol a little bit in your hand so that your thumb can get to your mag release. Or if you have an extended mag release, you may be able to reach a little bit easier. So we're going to flip the pistol. As this hand comes in, we're gonna engage the mag release, keeping the pistol vertical to help drop that magazine. Now, as that's happening, I'm bringing my pistol back in here. Okay, where now I've got both hands in here. Again, this is building off our pistol draw where when we started, we came up to this point, All right, This is our workspace we talked about. So I'm in here, now I'm back here again. So again, muscle memory, this is all what we've done before. As I'm in here, now this, this hand comes in tight and the reason for that is I can put my elbow up against my body which helps stabilize all of this so that now when I go to put the magazine in, everything's more stable. This hand comes back here, again, elbows pinned. Okay, now I take this hand and Good muscle memory is I always come to center, I'm gonna drop down, and then I'm gonna start sweeping across. So it doesn't matter where my magazines are, whether I'm in my second or my third magazine change, as long as I always come back to center, come down and sweep across, I'm always gonna hit a magazine, right? So I come down, I start sweeping. Now this is key. When I sweep, I'm sweeping over and I wanna grab that magazine with the palm of my hand. So if you notice when I come across, I plant that magazine into the palm of my hand so I get a good grip on it. Now, if you look, my index finger goes alongside of the magwell so that when I extract the magazine, I pull straight up on the magazine, my index finger now is indexed along the front of the magazine and I've got a good grip of the magazine in the palm of my hand. So I have good control of that magazine. So I'm in here, everything's nice and stable. My arms are stable. I've just extracted this magazine. I've got good control of it by having my finger elongated along the front. I have a good grip in my palm. My arms are in tight to my side. Everything's locked in. Now, back up real quick. As all of this, everything we just talked about is happening, my eyes are still downrange. I'm still watching to see what the threat is. 
Do I need to then start moving and get behind cover? Am I doing this fast enough where I don't need to do that? But I'm always watching what's going on downrange. All this becomes muscle memory. I come in, I sweep the new magazine up. I have good control of it. Now, as I go to the mag well on the, on the uh, pistol, that's when I'm gonna break my eyes off from downrange really fast. I'm gonna look for that split second to make sure that I'm driving the magazine into the mag well. Once I see it's in the mag well, my eyes go back to the threat. I drive that magazine in, all right? Drive it in once, no additional slapping. Okay, we just come up, eyes, drive it in nice and hard. And a lot of times what's gonna happen if we've had a slide lock, driving that magazine in real hard is gonna end up sending that slide forward and load that round for us anyway. So we drive that in forward and then look, muscle memory again, building back to the previous videos and um, our pistol draw, we're right back here again. So now all I'm doing is going back to that, completing my grip, okay? Finger goes on the trigger, start prepping the trigger as I push the pistol out, okay? And I get the full extent and I've got my sights, everything lined up, I'm ready to engage. All right, so we'll go through this again. All right, I've gone through pistol draw, I'm engaging, I need to do a magazine change. So my hand breaks off, the pistol moves, keeping it vertical, I drop magazine, this hand comes through down to center, I sweep across, good palm on the magazine, finger extended, eyes always down range, everything's tight in here. I look for that split second, yep, I put it inside the magazine well, I drive it home, finish my grip, prep the trigger, push the pistol back out, I'm ready to engage, okay? So let's run through a couple real quick dry. And this, you don't have to be on the range, you don't have to be shooting rounds to go through and to practice this. This is great dry fire drill that you can do in the house, dry magazines, you just go through those motions, all right, get everything set. So come up, I engage. Okay, let's go through talking about a magazine change with the slide locking to the rear. So we've gone dry, we're in a, we're in a shootout, we've just gone dry and now we need to execute that magazine change. Same exact process as everything else that we've done. So slide locks to the rear, I know I need to change my magazine. Okay, hand comes back, I break my grip, turn sideways, I'm gonna drop, all right, the source, I come down, find my new one, finger comes up in, like I said before, eyes only come off from downrange or off of our threat just to make sure the magazine is going into the well. Now, if I slam it home, on some, that slide may lock go forward all the way. If it doesn't go forward, then there's, there's a couple different ways that we can send the slide forward. The first is by using our primary hand, right? Our, our uh, firing hand on the pistol. If you can reach it with your thumb, then once you slide that magazine in, then as I'm completing my grip, I will send the slide forward, complete my grip, prep the trigger, push the pistol out, line up my sights, I'm ready to engage. Now, if we get back to this point, the other method that we can do is put the pistol, we put the magazine in, in the pistol, then we can use our support hand as we come up to complete our grip, our support hand can then engage and then push forward, okay? And then lastly, the last method, which is one I don't recommend. Um, some people do it, some people teach it. I just think it develops bad muscle memory, I'll tell you why. So here's the last. I drive the magazine in and then I take my support hand, I come over the top and I pull back and then rack my slide, complete my grip, push back out. Here's the reasons why I, I, I'm not a fan of that method is when you build that muscle memory every time of when you do a mag change, now you're coming back and you're doing this. If you're in a firefight and let's say I've got a 17 round magazine and I shoot 16 rounds, I know that I have a slight lull and I wanna go through my mag change now. What happens is you've just built that muscle memory so now I go through a mag change, I still have a round inside the chamber, but my muscle memory every time I did a mag change, now I do that. I just lost a good round that I could have used. So not really a big fan of that. And I also feel that this additional motion of coming over the top to rack and then move your hand back over to complete your grip to present just takes a little bit longer. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying whoever teaches it is teaching you wrong. I'm just saying for what I've been taught and the way that I shoot and the what I teach, 
I'm not a fan of it. I think it's a waste of time, and I think you could build that muscle memory in in the situation where then you may jack a good round that you could use. Let's talk about a couple different types of magazine changes. Now, in this video, we cover basically a speed reload. So this is a, uh, I also call it a tactical reload, but this is when I'm engaged, I'm in a firefight, I've either slide locked to the rear because I went dry, or I'm low enough on ammo, I know I may only have one round or two and I have a slight lull, and I just wanna go ahead and, and speed, drop my magazine, I'm not worried about it, get a fresh one in there and, and push the pistol back out so I'm ready to engage. Okay, that's what we just went over. Another one that you can do is more of a lull in the fight, you have rounds left in your magazine and you wanna save those rounds. Okay, so in that situation, what I would do is the same kind of process except when I come back here, I'm not gonna drop my magazine yet. I don't wanna drop good rounds that I have in case something happens as I'm, as I'm coming back here to grab my fresh magazine, okay? So I could still push back out and engage if need to, but I come back here, I grab my magazine first, then I bring my magazine up, okay? I'm ready to go in, and then I'm gonna take a second part of my hand, my outside fingers, and then I will grab that magazine as it drops out, put the fresh one in, okay? Then I'm gonna take this magazine and I'm gonna save it. I'm either gonna put it in a pocket somewhere, okay, so I know I have it for later, or what some guys will do, if you have an empty space somewhere, is, is some may put it into one of your mag pouches, but they'll put it in backwards, okay? So now the round's facing the rear so that you will see it and know, okay, that's not a full magazine. It's a technique. Um, most of the time what I teach and in all my courses, we just go through and we just do the speed reload, okay? And just drop your magazine every time. Okay? That method, practicing that every time, that's the one where when something happens, you get into a firefight, you're subconsciously going through this process you need to do a magazine change, just drop it, boom, it's the fastest to get a fresh magazine in there, and now you're ready to go, okay? If you've had a lull, you get back behind cover, now we can take and kind of do more of an ad administrative, okay, drop my magazine and do this. One of the things I don't want you to get into the habit of, and this does come down sometimes to your equipment and the range that you're on, is I see uh, a lot of law enforcement guys that I teach where when they do their mag change, just because they don't want to wreck their magazines every time, that they are catching their magazine, then they grab their second one, they put it in, and then they put it in a pocket somewhere, even if it's empty, completely empty. They go through that process because they don't want their magazine hitting the ground, breaking, chipping, whatever. And I understand magazines aren't cheap. They don't grow on trees. You can't just go pick them up. But it does build bad, bad muscle memory. And here's a short story. My father was a police officer. I remember him telling me this story years and years ago. Back, they were all shooting six shooters. They always did that on the range because they didn't want to police up their brass afterwards. So when they would pull their uh, their brass out, they'd, they'd uh, flip the barrel out, they'd dump the brass into their hand, throw it in their pocket, grab their speed reloader, load it back up, and then go back to shooting. An officer got into a firefight. After a firefight was over, he had a pocket full of brass because that's what he trained himself on the range was he didn't want to pick up his brass. He continually dropped it in his hand when subconsciously he wasn't thinking and got into an engagement. There was extra seconds he took to actually dump the brass into his hand and then speed reload and get back out into the fight. So it took extra seconds. Obviously, he's still alive to tell that story, but you never know when that those few seconds may save your life. So the speed reload, I believe, is the most ideal. It's the one that you should practice because when the subconscious needs to kick in and you're in a firefight, that's the reload you need to be doing. Equipment for today's video. Obviously we got our brand new Zev G34 tricked out pistol. Uh, this is a Dragonfly edition, uh, pretty slick. I've got, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred rounds through it so far. Um, really liking it, it's pretty tricked out. Um, running the competition holster, my uh, CNG for the Glock 34. I got my CNG tactical belt on, which I really like. This is slick. You have a Velcro underbelt and then your belt, you set it up. <clears throat> nice, sturdy, beefy metal clasp. Um, it even has a D-ring on it uh, where you could put uh, something to snap in with if you needed to. Uh, and then I've got my CNG competition uh, Glock individual mag holders. And then I always have on here my CNG 556 
uh, for my uh, all my rifle drills and stuff when I need to do my rifle mag change, which all these fundamentals that we're going over in the pistol uh, mag change pertain also to the rifle stuff, and that video will be coming.